Welcome on back to Austin Field at Chandler High School. We've got a good one for you here on Friday night. Pinnacle taking on Chandler right near right now. The Pioneers lead 16 to 10 over the Chandler Wolves. I'm Jordan Ham Sports 360 AZ alongside the Sun Devil sources, uh, Cardinal source, any other sources, uh, Chris Cartman. Uh, and Chris, it's we've seen some pretty darn good quarterback play uh, from both quarterbacks who happen to be sophomores. have seen great quarterback from both of these guys, Jordan, and yet, even though that's the case, it's 16 to 10, a, a lower scoring game than I think most people had anticipated, and that's because we've seen some pretty good defensive performances. We've seen the, both of these teams shoot themselves in the foot a little bit with some errors, uh, but kind of an exciting game, I, I would say, to this point, and, and maybe Chandler with a little bit of a hangover coming off of a, a high scoring game played out of state. Uh, against Corona Centennial last week and not quite into the game fully as yet. Yeah, still early for, for both of these teams. A lot of turnover for both of these guys. Um, on the Chandler side, you have to replace the likes of Mason Moran, Chase Lucas, Nikhil Harry, Hamilcar Rashad on the defensive side, KT Tolini. You know, you can, you can go down a, a whole list of very experienced guys that had a lot to do with their state title run a couple years ago and then on the pinnacle side, there are quite a few guys up front and in that front seven defensively that they had to replace, including Drew Dixon, the kind of the heart and soul of that defense and things like that. But we've seen these two young quarterbacks come in and really show a lot of poise. Not they, they really don't look like sophomores. They've, they've been able to evade the pressure quite a bit and think on their feet. We've seen Conover with the chest pass. We saw Spencer Rattler avoid a sack by basically getting his throwing arm free and able to, to find some space where the only player in, in that zip code was his receiver. So we'll see what is in store for the second half. Right now, Pinnacle leads 16 to 10 thanks to a Spencer Rattler rushing touchdown. He was able to air one out at the end of the half as time expired. And then also there was a Jeffrey McGuire field goal on the Chandler side. You have t a TJ Green rushing touchdown, and then the special teams as well from Cash Peterman picking up the field goal. But as Chris, as you said, there's been quite a few mistakes in the red zone, things like that. And you had Pinnacle go for it on a fourth and one, not able to convert. You saw some mistakes for Chandler. They had TJ Green in the end zone for the second time, but due to a false start, they had to go back, settle for a field goal. Uh, so the score could be very different here had those mistakes not happened. But now we have Chandler receiving the ball. They're going from left to right in their blue helmets, black uniforms, gray pants. And then you have Pinnacle in their blue helmets and going all white for the, white yes, for the, the uniform, pant, and number. And we are just underway here for the second half onside kick and that's gonna that has enough distance I think Chandler was able to fall on it but Pinnacle was breathing down their neck yeah even though it was a short kick Chandler is taken over at the 28 yard line so the field position isn't a total advantage for Chandler right now. They very well could be doing that with Conover under center as they give it to Green. Green able to pick up about five yards before getting taken down. They've they've seen some success from when they are able to have Conover go under center, the run game really hits its stride, as you said, and able to kind of enforce their will. Damian Maxwell coming in the backfield now. Conover under center. He'll give it to Maxwell. Maxwell has some space, makes it up to the 40, the 35, the 50. Now in 
pinnacle territory at the 49. They'll give it to Maxwell again. Maxwell gets taken down, though, instantly by quite a few pinnacle pioneers. Second down and 11. Conover in the shotgun. He will drop back. Has some options. He's scrambling around, avoiding that pinnacle defense, sidestepping as best he can. And again, he turns a what should have been a four yard loss into a four yard gain and a manageable third down now. over third and six 48 yard line trips to his right it looked like to me at least TJ Green might have been leaning a little bit so third down and 11 now for the Wolves <laughs> Trips to the right, single receiver to the left. Conover drops back, has a pass over the middle, incomplete. Chandler will be punting. Snap is good. They get the punt off. And that's going to settle up right around the 14-yard line. No return by Duvall. And the secondary four pinnacles done a pretty good job. Alex Flood, Dylan Stevenson, Adam Duvall, those are three playmakers that Coach Dana Zupke really wanted to highlight going into this game when I was able to speak to him. And they've been able to limit the big plays from Chandler. Rattler hands off. And he's eaten up right away. Zach Bowers looked like he was leading the way. Williams Burns might have been in on that as well. Short gain there. Second and eight from the 15-yard line. Rattler in the shotgun. He'll hand it off again. Much of the same as the last play. A couple yards, and there's some extracurriculars going on on the far side of the field. Very lucky by Chandler to not get a dead ball personal foul there. And, and here we are seeing Pinnacles probably got into its left side of that offensive line and let them know that they, they need to win their blocks. Uh, Thomas, as we mentioned, didn't have a good first half, I don't think, but came back there. Brings up a shorter third down situation. Third and five. Rattler play action rolls to his right, tries to hit his running back incomplete. Really good job tipping that out by Ch Chandler's linebacking core. I think again that was uh, Parker Henley. He's been just really cerebral out there and understanding what's coming and, and what he needs to do to stop it. Yeah, Henley's been all over the place both this game and, and throughout all season so far. 
punt unit out for Pinnacle. Gunnar Romney setting up at his own 41-yard line. There again, we're seeing substitution issues with Pinnacle on special teams. It, it, it was just too many instances of this at the outset of the game. It was really before the game even started. Yeah, exactly. That Except that one was uh, with Chandler. Yeah, with both teams. Right, yeah. right. So timeout Pinnacle as they try to get things settled now. The Pioneers lead 16 to 10. A couple of quick drives stalled out by both Chandler and Pinnacle. 8.16 left here in the third quarter. Looks like we're getting reset again. And this time a timeout by Chandler. So not sure what's going on with the, the special teams for both of these schools so far early in the second half. But both have now burned timeouts here within the first four minutes of the second half. Jeffrey McGuire will be punting this one off for Pinnacle. Gunnar Romney stands at his own 46-yard line, ready to return. Snap is good. McGuire barely gets it up, has a punt that hangs for a while. That's going to be returned by Romney at the 35. Flag on the play. And he makes his way up to about the 40-yard line before getting taken down. Tremendous punt. There was a lot of hidden time on that punt. Forced uh, a return man to retreat. Made a nice over-the-shoulder catch. But because the punt was, was, was so nice, it led to a loss of about an opportunity that was just too enticing right in front of two officials. over the show, shoulder catch, trying to make something out of nothing. As you said, that, that ball hung up there for quite a long time. The coverage team was able to get down the field quickly. And with that penalty, they'll slide back to their own 18-yard line. That's what they're going to do. Give it to Green. He breaks out, has some space, and he's going to go to the 40. 45 50 gets tripped up. That was Bennett Lieb with the touchdown saving tackle. And Chris, just like you said, Chandler just needed to out physical pinnacle right there, and they did exactly that on that run. Really nice play there. TJ Green shot out of the cannon, blocking set up effectively. They really have more guys in the box, and they got a helmet on the helmet there. Now in the pinnacle zone, 44 yard line, and they will do that. He's gonna try to bounce it to the outside, but pinnacle sniffs that out nicely. That was Lieb again, getting in the backfield. Conover under center again, second down and 12 from the 46. Play action, he'll roll to his right, 
has to avoid a tackler, and he dumps it off to Johnson. Johnson able to dance his way up to about the 46-yard line. Third down and two on their own 38, excuse me, I said on the at the 46, they're at the 36. Conover going under center. He'll drop back. Quick little dump off to Romney who gets it. He'll get the first down. First and 10 now at the 31 yard line. Conover remaining under center now. He'll give it to Green. Green finds some space again up to the 20, 15. He won't be stopped this time. He finds the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. That's going to tie that at 16 with 6.38 left in the third quarter. Chandler flexing their muscles on that drive. Tied the game with the chance for the lead now. Snap is down. Pinnacle did a good job getting to the ball, but the kick is up and good. Chandler now leads 17 to 16, 638 left in the third quarter. And that was a drive where Conover who was in the shotgun for most of this game, was under center the entire time. And as you said, very simple. Just give the ball to TJ Green, convert a couple quick passes. Nothing too fancy, but they're able to drive down the field and take the lead. Chandler getting ready to kick this thing off. Kick is off. And that's taken just in the end zone, so that'll be a touchback for Pinnacle. So we'll see how Pinnacle responds. Chandler really showing what they could do offensively. And, Chan and uh, Pinnacle's been able to really bounce back, hang with them, pick their spots. like Chris Manoa got a little too antsy there. So that'll that'll bump him up. And that's the thing, Spencer Rattler able to do the little things. He, you've seen the talent, the athleticism, the the big arm, but he's also able just to pick up those chunks of yards here and there, and that can really be the difference in a football game. Rattler is going to keep it, and he's got a lot of green in front of him. Jukes a defensive back before he gets taken down at around the 37-yard line, 12-yard pickup. at the 38 
First down and 10, 6.20 left in this third quarter. Rattler in the shotgun, man in motion. And he's gonna throw a back shoulder fade. And he gets dragged out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. And that was a throw that only his receiver could get to. Well defended really, and a laser by Rattler into the boundary. Ball got on to the receiver in a hurry. Looked like that was uh, Parker Red again, I believe. He's been a big target for Spencer Rattler, 6'1 junior. And Rattler's got four receivers out there with him, as well as Briggs. That'll be a read option. Tosses it, but air mails his receiver. One of the few inaccurate passes. He had a, a man with a little bit of space, but not able to connect with him. Looks like a run pass option play. Rattler got a little bit overzealous there. That was a, one of the rare options, uh, rare times on the field where he seemed to get too excited and not be able to take advantage of a situation. There was one in the first half where he didn't get set, and then that play, and really that's been about it. Second down and 10 at the Chandler 44. Six minutes left in this third quarter. Rattler drops back and he's pressured, steps up in the pocket, finds some space, able to tuck and run, get the first down and a few more before he ducks out of bounds. And now, he was dead to rights and was able to convert that into a first down. You know who had a bullseye on him? It was Sam Pepper once again coming off that left side of the edge. Rattler, he felt the rush while keeping his eyes downfield, realizing he wasn't gonna be able to throw the ball anywhere step right up vertically. That's a hard thing to do is to stop that quarterback from climbing up verti vertically and scrambling and Rattler's put, putting the team on his back right now. First and 10 from the 34 yard line. Rattler has two backs in the backfield with him. He'll step back, roll to his left, airs it out. And that's a nice catch by Dalton Cash. Flag on the play. Looks like it is coming back. We've seen Dalton Cash and the physicality he can have in a, in a jump ball. Looks might have done just a little too much there. So they're going to reset right at about midfield. First and 25 from the 49. Clock ticking inside five and a half minutes. Rattler drops back, nothing doing. He's able to evade a tackler, evade another one, airs it out. Jump ball situation for Pinnacle and he's able to come down with it. No, called incomplete. Jump ball and Derek Williams came away with the football, but they're calling it an incomplete pass. It looked like the pinnacle receiver had come down with it. That would have been a terrible break for Chandler to have that ball been caught. Jordan was the reason is because the right tackle had an absolutely blatant hole that was not called there. Should have been called by the referee 10 times out of 10. He didn't. They would have had a serious right. And honestly, that looked very similar to that last play of the first half where there was a little bit of pressure and Rattler was able to roll out, show off that arm. Identical type of play. Yeah. So they're going to reset second and 25. 518 left. I'm pretty sure it was Sam Pepper who was out. He's been getting off on, on that outside throughout this game. 
Rattler dropping back, steps up in the pocket, and he gets wrapped up, throws it off to his running back, Griggs. And the presence of mind of Rattler to get that ball to a receiver looked like he was wrapped up, but he is so slippery. Third and 22 now. Looks like a halfback draw. Griggs has a little bit of space. Gets up to the 40. 38 before he gets taken down by quite a few wolves. Yeah. A lot of black and blue surrounding him. Yeah. So now we'll see what Coach Zutsky does. The offense is coming out. Chandler Faithful getting into this one. Rattler gets the snap, steps back, has some time. Airs it out, great pass breakup by the Chandler secondary. First the tip and then the hit. So Chandler with the big stop, now the opportunity to extend their lead. Conover remains under center. And guess who, TJ Green, and he picks up 10 and then some before he's taken down at about midfield. to green and he gets over the midfield mark before getting taken down two forty five left Second down and seven. Play action fake. Conover looking for the big throw. He's getting some pressure. Able to avoid some tacklers and slide out about no gain. Very lucky there. He had Johnny Johnson on a city post wide open behind the defense. And he didn't need to get it to him or he didn't see it. That was a stellar day. over with the break even on that last play. Third down and seven. And delayed handoff there to Green. Green's going to be close to the first down marker, but he is short. Again, here, George. My thought is why can't the Chiefs continue to play on second down and throw the ball and they're able to get yards on a consistent basis. They gave him a very Ex generous spot yeah. there. So they will reset with with the first down. And going to green again. He goes up the left side. Picks up a few before taking he's taken down. Zaire. 
Jair Bogle was on the tackle on that last one. Play action fake. Conover finds Romney. He gets tackled at about the 16 yard line. This is coming back, flag on the play. Hold on the offense. So that was a very well executed play action by Chandler, but they're gonna have to back it up and reset now. Conover was in the shotgun. And there. Right. Yeah, plenty of ball game left. And Chandler having to burn their second timeout now. They hold the lead, 17-16 are sitting at a second and 20 on the 49 and as you see those burn timeouts that are really wasted come back to hurt Chandler late in the game and I think if you look at Chandler in this second half if, if it was just the eyeball test on offense you would you would say that they'd be up by quite a few scores right now looks they've been really dominant but penalties like this and having to burn these timeouts could uh, could be very costly as Pinnacle just continues to hang around. Conover back in the shotgun. Four receivers out there along with TJ Green in the backfield with him. Conover will drop back. Airs it up the middle. Has Romney not able to make the catch. Pinnacle safety was right there. So now third and very long, third and 20 at their own 49 yard line. We're within one minute of the Third quarter's conclusion, 57 seconds left. Conover has three receivers to his right, one to his left. TJ Green in the backfield with him. Pinnacle brings pressure. Conover steps up, able to slip away, but he gets wrapped up. Couple yard gain. So punt unit is out. Pinnacles. Return man is Bennett Lieb. Punt almost gets blocked. And that's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 16 on the far side. Jake Piper, quarterback, wide receiver. If he laid out for that ball, I think he gets that. did a great job getting to the punter. I think it was unblocked. And it was uh, from the interior. So here's where the pinnacle offense will set up at the 17 yard line. Two seconds left in the third corner. 
Rattler drops back, throws far side, great back shoulder fade again. Hayden Hatton with the first down reception, and that's going to end the third quarter, and this is a tight one. Chandler leading by one, 17-16, as we head to the fourth quarter. Seventeen sixteen ball game. The points that have come for Chandler to TJ Green rushing touchdowns. And then a field goal by Cash Peterman. And then for Pinnacle, there was a rushing touchdown by Spencer Rattler. He was able to air it out at the end of the first half as time expired to give them the 16-10 lead at the time. And then also a field goal by Jeffrey McGuire. So we have flipped the field. Both teams are out there setting up at the 34-yard line. And we have a first down for Pinnacle. it off to Griggs. He's able to drag a couple Wolves with him. About a six or seven yard pickup. Nice run. Second down and two at the 42. Griggs was an absolute workhorse for them against Basha. And read option. He's dancing around, able to complete the pass. And that was completed to Lieb. Marked right at the first down marker. We'll see if that's enough to it'll be third and very short. So we'll see what this pinnacle offense does. In this third down situation, have Rattler in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, two to his right. Griggs in the backfield with him. Chandler showing pressure. Chandler faithful making some noise. Rattler gets the snap. Bubble screen and just a little ahead of his receiver. That was Noah Witzo. He had some space but not able to connect. So now fourth and short. Pinnacle punt unit out. Romney, the punt returner, at the 11 yard line. McGuire gets the punt off and again able to hang it up. Fair catch call by Romney. Almost loses it. Able to recover it though. Wow. Dearly mocked. Well, I would have taken the over on a very high over under oh, in this right. game. Uh, maybe like even 70 points. I would have said over. And it looks like. We are going to fall dramatically shy of what most people would have expected from an overall scoring standpoint in this game. Yeah, especially for two teams. Both of them put up 49 last week. Chandler's loss to Centennial out up in California and then Pinnacle's overtime win over Basha. But here we are, Conover under center. At his own 24-yard line. Creeping up here. Pinnacle's creeping up. Gives it to TJ Green.
receivers out there. Screen to Romney on the far side. He picks up a couple before he's taken down. So we are at a third and five on the 30. Conover moving back to the shotgun. Green in the backfield with him. And he finds Green, and he's got some space. Gets the first down. Hurdles a defender before he gets taken down at the 40-yard line. And you just see the athleticism that TJ Green possesses while he just jumped over a pinnacle defender. That was Alex Flood, one of their best defenders. Play action, far side now to Romney. He's got a little bit of space, finds his way up, breaks a tackle, and he gets up to the 40. A couple of very athletic plays that have shot some life into this Chandler crowd. Romney's now coming off the field. Conover under center, first and 10 from the 40. He'll give it to Green. Green coming near side, tries to hurdle again. I think just kicked a pinnacle player in the face, essentially trying to hurdle him. He just got a penalty because he tried to hurdle the guy and the guy stood up and he kicked him in the face. He wasn't trying to do and that, but he can't kick somebody in the face. It looks like the recipient of that didn't wasn't too fond of that either. I think they got a little physical when the tackle was made as well. So we'll we'll see what how they'll make all this out. You got an issue to watch here because one of the better players on Chandler, we talked about a lot, Trevor Romney's up on the trainer table over here. Appears to be taken off his left shoe. He's had a couple really big plays for the Wolves. Also set up some nice blocking. Looks like a retake here. Maybe just add to it. You know, you know, add to it as they try to get this game out on the field. This is a great whole other element to this game now. You have these two teams that are even a little bit more on edge and some of the players after And also note, Ryan Johnson has not been in this game. He didn't dress, was injured in the game against Centennial. Coach would say he's one of the most athletic players they have at Chandler. You can hear that saying a lot. Mm -hmm. That's what he mm -hmm. was noted to me. But, but he's a speed burner, was a state champion at Michigan before transferring to Chandler. And they're going to march Chandler back here with a lot of booze. People booing because it, it wasn't intentional, but th that doesn't really matter if you kick somebody in the face. Right. <laughs> Things I'm sure you didn't think you were going to say at the start <laughs> of today. <laughs> no. But back to uh, Ryan Johnson entering this game on 18 carries. He had 191 yards. That's 10.6 per carry and three touchdowns. And he has the type of speed that just gets you on the second level so quickly. And that, that's where you can break some that maybe haven't done in this game for Chandler. But I, I still say Chandler should be able to play themselves more in a pinfall just having more so to just jump down his foot a little bit. Green is off the field now. DeCarlos Brooks is in the backfield. Damian Maxwell is in there joining him as well. Still getting situated. 
Again, Chandler leading 17, 16, 8, 50 left. Conover under center. Play action. And he's looking to go Johnson's way. He's got a little bit of space, and he almost makes the catch, but not able to connect. He had the space. Chris, you called it. They did bracket him there, but he went right through the seam of both of those guys, and the ball just wasn't quite as accurate as it could have been. But I, I saw that coming in advance that they were going to try to take that opportunity. So had a chance to at least get in the pinnacle red zone, but not able to connect. Second down and 18, Green back on the field. Along with four receivers, Conover in the shotgun. He'll drop back, goes to Green on the screen, and he comes near side up to the 45. Scampers his way up to the 40 before he steps out at about the 38 yard line. Lucas Jarvis was able to push Green out of bounds. Third down and nine from the 39. Play action. He's going to go Johnson's way. He's able to connect on that, get his feet in, and convert on the first down before getting shoved out by Noah Jewell. left in this ball game. Chandler leading 17-16. First and 10 from the 23. Conover is under center. And it looks like there is somebody jumped. So that's a false start. It's going to drive them back now to the 28-yard line. center. He'll give it to TJ Green. Green spins out of tackle before he goes right back into another one. Tackled at the 26-yard line. has his signals. He's relaying it over to his offensive lineman. He's going to move to the shotgun. Johnny Johnson in motion. He gets a fly sweep, cuts it up, picks up a couple yards before getting taken down at the 25. A couple of groups of players getting engaged here. We are within seven minutes now. Third down and nine as Chandler's swapping players out. Romney is back on the field. He's on the far side. And Conover goes quick to Johnson, who picks up a, has a little bit of space, able to get into the end zone for the score. And the Chandler Wolves leading receiver able to have a couple of big catches on this drive and help extend this lead now to seven points with the potential for eight. Trips to the field, the number two receiver on the stop route. The other two receivers went vertically. The pinnacle defensive back dropped off, and it created that creep for Johnson to be able to get up in, which he did a nice job of exploding into the touchdown. Big extra point here. That kick is good. So now an eight-point ball game. 
Meaning if Pinnacle does find the end zone, they now have to convert a two-point conversion to tie this game. And they've been able to hang with Chandler really this entire football game. Noah Witso and Quentin Powell deep for Pinnacle. And we've seen what Spencer Rattler can do. Just needs a little bit of space and he can work some wonders. So we'll see if he's able to do that in the final 649 left in this game. Kick is in the end zone, so that's a touchback. with four wide receivers. He'll drop back as a player on a wheel route. Good defense, though, by Javon Aquin, sophomore. He it makes you wonder when it's hard to see on that far side, but it almost makes me wonder if Dalton Cash was hurt or something's going on because we haven't seen him, and he had a, a really impactful first half. Yeah, he was a target of Spencer Rattler early and often in that first half. Haven't seen much of him in the second. Second down and 20. From the 20, excuse me. Rattler gets a throw off, not able to connect. Flag in the backfield. Holding call that moves Pinnacle back to the eight yard line, second down 22. Rattler has three receivers to his left, one to his right. Griggs in the backfield with the man in motion. And it's going to be a halfback draw. Griggs gets eaten up right away. That was Zach Bowers. That was the first one to get to him. A little bit of a bad situation that Pinnacle put itself in here. Then inside of its own 10 yard line, down eight. You don't want to give Chandler a short field when we're already in a challenge situation here. Now within six minutes, two in the backfield with Spencer Rattler. Rattler airing it out, and that's almost picked off, kicks off of him. 
that was DeCarlos Brooks. We've heard him coming out of the backfield, but he was in the secondary now. Big pass break up there. Wire kicking in his own end zone. Romney at about midfield. Timeout called, 5.39 left. There now have zero timeouts left. Two of them burned off within the first four minutes of the th third quarter. So they will have to go without timeouts here. On the other side, Pinnacle with two, trailing by eight. And they're deep in their own territory having to get a punt off. They'll also have to stop what's sure to be a run-heavy offense here moving out by Chandler. Wire gets the punt off. It's a low punt. Romney fields it at midfield, able to split a couple defenders before he gets taken down at about the 43-yard line. Just under five and a half minutes left. Pinnacle already trailing by eight. Essentially Chandler adds to the scoreboard. It is a two score game. In the shotgun. Fly sweep to Johnny Johnson. Johnson breaks the tackle to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. And that might be the exclamation point for Chandler in this hard fought game against Pinnacle as they go up 30 to 16 thanks to a Johnny Johnson run. And that's the type of play that, if you're familiar with Chandler at all, you see that quite a bit, whether over the years, whether it be with Chase Lucas or Colby Taylor, as the extra point is up and good, make it 31-16, but that's something that is a staple of the Sean Aguano offense. Yeah, they love those looping sweeps, and they like to run that, the, bring that receiver around. in need of a, a few big plays with not a lot of time left. 5.18 left in this ball game. 31 to 16 Chandler leads. And we're 
getting ready to kick this off. Quentin Powell back, as, as well as Noah Witso for Pinnacle. And the kick will be taken in the end zone for a touchback, despite Witso's best acting job. level in the last week or so a lot of states don't have that rule where if the ball breaks the plane of the end zone is an automatic touchback and we've seen some guys who have taken it out and had some big returns but in Arizona just given I think that the safety of the players is, is paramount and that's a dangerous you know situation the kickoff return they don't do that Rattler leads the offense out there, tries to hit Powell on a wheel route, throws it behind him. Pass was almost jumped by a Chandler defender. Outside linebacker undercut that and nearly took that ball off and was looking for the house to be had. You know who it probably was. We don't know who it was for sure, but you know, you know who I would guess it was? I have a couple guesses. That, that's a uh, pretty fair bet as Rattler completes the pass to Lieb. He gets pushed out of bounds. Picks up a couple here, so it'll be a third and third and about five. So 5.09 left here in this game. Crucial. Pinnacle is going to need a quick score and things to go their way a little bit. Rattler drops back. He gets some pressure. He gets wrapped up and thrown down. Matthew Ozioy. Ozioy. Yeah, he he busted through that offensive line, able to. Wrap up Rattler. Looks like the punting unit is going to come out. So now it's really dire. Clock is running. We're at four and a half minutes left. Wire at the four yard line setting up. Snap is good, able to get that one off. That's going to hang for a while. Romney with the fair catch at the Chandler 46. So, as we are on the eve of ASU's season, a couple big Chandler Wolves have made their way to Tempe. Chase Lucas, Nikhil Harry. Chris, I know you're at every practice. You are very much embedded in, in that program covering them. What have you seen out of those two players so far at the college level? Well, Nikhil Harry is going to likely start the opener tomorrow with NAU. It's only going to be the ninth true freshman start his first game in ASU history. So clearly so that's that's yeah. saying something. Yeah, he's going to be great. And Chase Lucas has pushed for a playing opportunity. Uh, I think he ends up redshirting, but he was right on the borderline as a cornerback or potentially a free safety. So his future is very bright as well. Close to a 10-yard pickup by T.J. Green, the Oregon State commit. Lucas uh, last year was 156 pounds, and that's just one of the factors that the Oregon State commit weighed on him. Uh, but he fits the ASU scheme very well. Uh, he can play one of probably three special down field positions. And then if they need him, they may decide to bring in a redshirt year. But he certainly will be uh, one that will benefit a lot from in the long term. Whereas Nikhil Harry will probably end 
end up being ASU's third or fourth receiver this year in terms of targets, receptions, yards. Yeah, he's really a physical specimen, really, since he was about, oh, a freshman in high school. Right. And handoff to Brooks. Good run there. First down. So as you look, we've talked a little bit about Chandler's pipeline to, to Oregon State, to, to Arizona State. Chris, what do you think it is about Sean Aguano's program in terms of player development, getting them to some of the big Pac-12 schools here at the next level? They do a really good job. Inside two and a half minutes. <laughs> Only marker down. off here to Brooks again. He's got a little bit of space. Makes it up to the 35 before getting taken down. Forty left here, second and fourteen. As Brooks tries to break it outside, but nice tackle by the pinnacle defender up front. The ball was a player that came on late in the year last year, but really cemented himself as a one of the top players on this pinnacle defense. So unless there are some very, very big surprises in the next minute and a half, Chandler will move to two and one, pinnacle at one and two. So moving forward, Chandler is going to be playing at Mountain Point next week. That should be a good game. That, that should be, yeah. Assumed to be two of the top teams in 6A. Right. Yeah, 
both Coach Iguano and Coach Norris Vaughn have really built up two sustainable programs that are always at the top and also get guys to the next level. And, you know, we, we talk about what Chandler can do, but you look at Isaiah Polamal over at Mountain Point, one of the top players in the state and has been getting looks all over the Pac-12. And I know ASU's in on him and Washington as well. USC, Oregon. I, I actually got some pretty good FaceTime with him up at the opening up in Oregon. And it was just really impressive to see him play against some of the best guys across the country. And on, on the Saturday day of 7-on-7, of seven seven, having three interceptions and just kind of getting to show show off his length and you know talking to national guys like Brandon Huffman and Greg Biggins and just raving about him about that length and his ability to perhaps play at, at the linebacker level, the safety level, at the um, you know at, at the collegiate level. Peterman lining up for the 42-yard field goal. Snaps down. And no good. Pinnacle got some good pressure on that one, but able to milk the clock. I'll tell you what, my opinion there, and I, I may be in the minority of true, it doesn't matter what I think, but I would have moved on for a field goal there because what happens if you get a field goal block? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's, there's things that can go wrong where as when you have the ball, Now looking at the pinnacle side of things, they're going to take on, they're on the road at Mesa Mountain View next week. Thrattler able to slip away from a, a would-be tackler, make a completion at the 35. He's able to step out. And this is a team last year able to go on a run. They, Coach Zupke said, essentially they got punched in the mouth when they played Chan Chandler to open the year last year. They had a bye week and then able to rattle off three big wins against Saguaro, Mesa Mountain View, and then Brophy. So this is a team that, that's able to kind of put it all together and is a dangerous team as that's a great pass breakup. Rattler with the quick pass. And they'll call that a first down just so clock will stop. 47 seconds left. Yeah, it'll be interesting how this uh, six-day division after the, the realignment and everything after just one year of 17 teams in what was Division One, now 6A able to kind of shake things up a little bit. You know, I think the expansion has been good. I mean, I, it's, it's really tough to find a perfect system. Yeah. So if you do it by, you know, school attendance and numbers and things like that, there, there are going to be those massive schools that just aren't a perennial power and things like that. So... It, it's tough to kind of find that happy medium, but I think it was very difficult having 17 teams in Division One when 16 made the playoffs. Agreed. I think in the long term, this is a step in the right direction. Correct. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Rattler airing it out, and that got picked off. Carlos Brooks. Brooks showing what he can do defensively as well. He's had a couple, he had a nice pass breakup now with the interception, had a couple nice runs as a running back. I'll tell you what, he showcased really good ball skills, a lot of poise, in rep composure there, and, and just kind of jumped up and, and, and bared it. That was a really nice play for a sophomore. And 
Yeah, he's a sophomore, so there's... Not like a quarter. Yeah. yeah. So that's just the type of player that Chandler produces, just athlete <laughs> on either side of the ball, I, on either side of the ball, and... It's like a grove there. It's just one line after the next. Yeah. It's kind of like when Jim Suaro or uh, Tulio Centennial, some of these players mm-hmm. that just keep it moving, they keep going, they're going to have that next wave coming in always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's never, a, it's never a rebuild, it's a reload. Right. As Chandler... We'll kneel this one and let the clock run out. So the final score will be 31 to 16. Very even battle for most of this. And you got to see two young quarterbacks, perhaps two future premier quarterbacks here in this state. And Chris, your final takeaways for this game. There you have it, 31-16, Chandler beats Pinnacle. Chandler moves to 2-1, and one. Pinnacle 1-2. One and two. Thanks so much for tuning in to Sports 360AZ for this high school football coverage. For the Sun Devil Sources, Chris Cartman, I'm Jordan Hamm of Sports 360AZ.